Hello, everyone, and welcome to Someone Should Have Told Me. I know it's been a minute, but I am here. My voice is a little hoarse, which probably is good because sometimes I start yelling, but (laughs) it's all good. I want to talk to you today about how everything requires attention. You know, there is nothing on this earth that does not require attention. I can't think of anything that does not require it. Of course, you have your house inside and out. That requires a lot of attention if it's going to be nice inside and out. You have to think about decorating. You have to think about keeping it clean. You just have to think about everything about this house. Even Your car, your car needs attention. You got to take it for oil change. You got to take it to get washed. You got to clean out the inside and it's just care. Then you have animals. Oh my God, animals. I don't even want to live with animals because they require so much attention that I do not have. I don't have time to baby an animal, and they never grow up. They never grow up. They never can alone while you go out of town. You have to treat them just like children darn near. And then I'm not even going to talk about children yet because they are a big requirement of attention. So I'm going to get back to them in one second. Your job or your career requires so much attention too. I mean, they want to know, what are you doing to further yourself in your position? What are you doing? Oh my God, take all these tests on the computer and these need to be done by a certain date. And then meetings and requirements that helps you with your career or your job. Okay. So already I'm tired. And then you have your mate. Your mate requires a lot of attention too, or else you are not going to have a mate. You have to put in the time for a relationship. And some people have a mate that requires more attention than others. And some of them have... Some that require a least amount of attention. But if they're requiring a least amount of attention, it's probably you that is requiring a lot of attention and are, you know, for your mate. So either way it goes, you have to put in the time for your mate. Now, yourself, you can't leave yourself out. You have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of your skin, your body inside and out. You have to make sure that things are running properly in your body else you won't be doing so good. You won't be able to live your full potential if you don't take care of your body. Now your skin, that's what we're looking at on the outward appearance. So you really want to moisturize (laughs) and you want to try to take care of that. Then you have friends, you have family, Everybody requires attention and time if you're going to have a relationship with them. I don't understand how people have time to not mind their own business. I got so many things that need attention that I don't have time to worry about petty stuff, stuff that don't matter. I have to focus. Now, let's get back to the children. The children require a lot of attention because they are your responsibility. You have to raise them to be able to be viable people in society. And they don't know how to do that. That is why you have them. They were born to you or however you got them. Maybe adoption. I don't know. But. You have to give them proper attention and you have to rear them properly because 
I was listening to the news. And in Michigan, that shooting that happened maybe a year ago at the Oxford schools, the psychologist was on the stand testifying that the boy who did the shooting was like a feral child. He wasn't crazy. He didn't have mental problems, but his parents didn't pay him any attention. A feral child, meaning that this child was pretty much raising himself. His parents didn't pay him much attention and he was just raising himself. And so therefore, this was the project that he took on to get attention and he has a lot of it now. I feel so sorry for him because it's not his fault that his parents brought him into the world and didn't pay him no darn attention, bought him a gun. You guys got to look it up. Bought him a gun and then just not even helping him to become a viable person in society. It's very, very, very sad. Children need so much. I'm surprised we don't have to have license to have them because they are the ones that's going to be taking care of us when we get old. They are going to be the future politicians. They are going to be the future. When we get old, they're the ones that's going to be taking care of us. And I'm going to tell you, from what I see, I'm going to have to be very healthy because I'm afraid. I'm afraid because there's so many parents worried about themselves, worried about how they look, worried about them getting out in the streets to hang out. Where are the June beavers in the world that would take care of their children? I had a conversation with my son and my daughter-in-law this past weekend because I gave my husband a birthday party. Lord knows that was some attention I had to give my mate because that's what he wanted and I wanted him to have what he wanted, my attention to my mate. Okay, so my daughter-in-law said that I have a special way of parenting. She said it was phenomenal and I was very, very happy and I was very impressed and I was very happy that she said this to me, even though I feel like I'm just a normal parent. I'm just a normal parent doing what normal parents would do. But apparently in this day and time, every parent doesn't feel the same. I see this because I know someone who have taken her grandchildren from her daughter. She's taken her grandchildren from her daughter to raise them because the kids weren't happy, the daughter wasn't happy, and she wasn't raising them right. And I guess the grandmother thought that she might have feral children. I'm going to use that now that the psychologists have said it. But... You have to raise your children because those are the people that's going to take care of you when you get older. And if you don't raise them right, then you're going to be up a creek when it comes time for them to take care of you. You have to think about these things. It's not just what's going on right now. You have to think about the future and what's going to be going on later. And you have to put time and effort into it if it's going to be good later. You have to prioritize what's the most important thing that you need to be focusing on right now to, to the minute practically because there's so much to do. And of course, your children are a priority because you don't have that much time with them. You know... I'm surprised that it is August already. Time has flown. And then I thought it was Wednesday and here it is Friday. Time is flying like 
no one's business. Like it got somewhere to go. Time. So prioritize your children because they have so much that we need to pour into them before they become adults. That is a very big priority in your life. If you decided to have some children, you need to show them the way of the world. Prepare them for the way of the world. I told you guys last week, I have my husband's nephew. He's not prepared for the world. And so therefore he's having such a hard time and I feel sorry for him. And also I want to help him. But in helping him, an attitude is very important. I want to encourage him to help himself. Ah, if you teach a man to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life. If you just keep giving him fish, he won't know how, and he's going to keep coming to you asking for fish. So I want to teach this young man how to fend for himself. And then on top of it all, every time he gets a little bit where he think he might be getting on top, then all of a sudden, his girlfriend is pregnant again. So he's 20-something, 23, and he is about to have his third child, and he has no job. He has no, no prospects of anything because he was not reared for life. He was just loved and cared for but not prepared for the world. It is so important that we prepare our children for the world. Of course, we love them so much. Yes, yes. But we have to prepare them for the world. Now, I had two boys. Of course, they were so cute. And I loved them so much. But in my mind, I kept saying, I have to prepare them for the world. My husband would always say, you better raise them to be somebody that you might want. And that is a big thing. You raise them and don't nobody want them and they got issues and problems. You need to shut things down and prepare your children while you have them, they are the most important thing. And if you don't prepare them, then they are going to be unprepared longer than 18, longer than 20, longer than 25. I don't know when they're going to get it, but if you don't prepare them and you don't help them to become independent, then they're going to be dependent on you. And you're going to see the things that you did not teach them. They're going to come up in your life and you're not going to be able to live a peaceful life if you love your child. And you see that. My daughter-in-law told me, as I said, that I had remarkable way of parenting. I don't see any other way of parenting. You love your kids so much, but you don't want to be overbearing. You don't want to take over their lives. You want them to be able to make solid judgments, problem solving skills. And so therefore you don't do everything for them either. You just guide them. You let them have their thoughts. You let them have their way of thinking. And then you talk to them. And in talking to them, then you can see what's going on in their heads and you can try to guide them to the right way. You cannot ignore your children. The children cannot raise themselves. You have to raise the children. That is the priority in your life from the time you have the child until that child has gotten to be independent of themselves. I was 
gunning for 18. And I used to tell my children, oh, you know, by 18, you out of here. There's no excuse. You're going to college and 18, you out of here. So when my first son turned 18 and he had prepared and got him an apartment in another city and he had registered for school in another city and he was taking care of business and then he found out that it was $5,000 extra because he didn't grow up in that city. Then he took a minute off, but he was prepared and he was packing up. And I was like, I know I told you that you had to be gone by 18, but I was just saying that so you wouldn't be here until you're 30, but you don't have to go. He was like, mom, I have to go. This is what you prepared me for. And you know what? He's been out there every since. And he is way past 18 now. And he's even had a couple of bumps in the road because, you know, nobody's perfect. But he refused to even come back and regroup. He was like, I'm out here. I don't have no kids. I can be out here. And I know I got a place to come if I need to, but I'm not coming unless it is absolutely necessary. Because as long as I am out here, I am still moving forward. I am good. He felt like if he came home that he would have been a failure. I hate that he feels that way because that is not the case. Everybody can go home and regroup. That's what home is for. You can come home, regroup, and keep going. But you can't forget that even then, attention is necessary to get back on track. Attention for whatever is necessary. Prioritize, get it done, and keep it moving. Even if he had came home, that's what would have had to happen. You don't slow down. You just have a place to lay your head. But he kept going. He's doing good. And amazing. I feel like my technique of mothering is only from love. And I don't understand how any parent could not love their child. You had that child from out of your body and with someone you chose to be with. Now, they might come out and have traits like the person that you chose to be with at that time that maybe you're not with no more. And now you dislike the traits of that, but that's your fault. That's not that child's fault. You love that child. You guide that child and you Make that child be the best that it can be. I don't understand how any parent couldn't do that for their child. Because the love of a child is like no other love that there is. This is some special kind of love from a child to a parent. And I don't understand how... Fathers can father children and then not be in their lives, especially if they look like them. Oh, my goodness. Deadbeat dad is not a worse thing to call a deadbeat dad. You can, we, can, we need to find something else. I don't even think the word is in the dictionary yet because it should be a terrible, terrible word that we call these parents that are not involved with their children's lives. But. Of course, children require the most attention, but that's only should be for 18 years. I know it sounds like a long time, but you know what? That time go by so fast that you don't even realize. That is why you have to focus and put all you can into your children while you can. Because once they're gone, even I still think about things that I could have did better, things that I could have did more of, 
things that I regret that happened. And they said I was a good mother. So I'm sure those poor children without a good mother are usually the sweetest children. And that's usually, you have some that be like, oh my God, did they come spawn from the devil? Oh my goodness. But <laughs> that's just funny. And I don't know many children like that because no one and nothing is all bad. There is some good in everything and everybody. I don't know of anybody that there isn't. But in requiring attention, that's the most important thing. And then, you know, of course, in between, you're loving your mate, in between raising your children because you're raising your children together and you're talking about things together. And then the kids grow up. And then I look around and I'm like, Oh my goodness, I am here with my husband by myself. I forgot who he is and I forgot who I am before the kids. But then you re-find each other because it's just you and your mate and you have empty nests and then you start to date again and you start to have time for more time for each other because before all the time was for the kids, but it was still all good. It was still wonderful. And this is the way that it was intended to be, you know, family vacations. And now we have vacations of our own. And remember I said animals need attention? Well, right now, I don't even want to live with an animal. I just want to focus on my husband. I just want to focus on my house. I just want to focus on my life and traveling and getting to the point where I can do anything I want to whenever I want to. I'm would like to get to the point where every day me and my husband just get up and do and be whatever we want. My husband is now and really has always been my best friend. That is a thing that needs to be in your relationship the attention that you give to your husband or your wife. These are the people that you've chosen and they really, really, really should be your best friend. That is the attention that we need from our mates. We need to be able to talk about anything, even though that's not always the case and it may need some work, but that's the attention that you need to give that relationship because Sometimes my relationship with my husband is much harder than the relationship with my siblings that I grew up with because he don't understand because his mother and father did not raise him as my wonderful parents did. My husband was abused as a child because he looked like his father because his father had left. And then when he seen my family, he was afraid, really and truly. He was afraid of this love that they were trying to give him because my parents were accepting. I just like I told my children, whoever you love, whoever you bring home, I will accept them because I trust you and I just want you to be happy. I'm not trying to pick your mate. I'm not trying to tell you what kind of mate to get. You find somebody that you love and that you want to be with. I will accept them no matter what. I said that to both of my children. Then they brought people home. My son ended up getting a divorce from that one young lady. And she wasn't a horrible person. 
but she was horrible to him. She wasn't a team player. She wasn't taught to be a team player. Her mother, I don't know, had never been married and then lived with an older man that he didn't even father her children because I think he was too old and couldn't. He told her to go out and get pregnant and then he'd say it was his. And that's what she did. And so the girl considered him her father, her real father. I think she only had met him once or twice. And so it does matter. It's not detrimental, but it is helpful when they say that you should marry someone that you are equally yoked with. It matters because if you don't, then it's harder work. It's not that it can't work because sometimes you need to help someone else to be able to understand and live the kind of life that you've been taught to live. So therefore, because their parents didn't teach them, then you have to take them in and you have to show them the way of the world if you love them. Sometimes it's so much harder but then in the end is so much worth it because the bottom line is the heart of the person. If they have a good heart, then they are worth it. They are worth it to help them to become a viable part of society. It is so important to prioritize the things that you have to give attention to because, as I said, Children, it's just a limited amount of time. Your husband, you should have a few minutes before you have kids. But nowadays, that's not even that's not even true. Most people have children before they even get married. And it is just the way it is. So therefore, then you have your family that you're blending, maybe your child with your husband or your child with your wife. And then you have that blended family. So it's not like it used to be. And it's even harder because so many people have gone astray. So many people are selfish. So many people don't care about nobody but themselves. And so many people just don't understand that the way of the world depends on what they are putting in their children. It depends on what you are putting out in the universe. You have neighbors. What does your neighbors think of you? You know, not that they require much attention. Just say hello across the fence or across the street. That's all that is required for them. They don't really require a lot of attention unless you have an elderly neighbor that needs help. Then, then you spread yourself a little bit thinner and keep it moving and be as much help as you can to everyone in the world. Do whatever you can, but focus on what you need to focus on. Stay out of other people's business and then... Maybe the world can be a better place. If you apply your attentions to where your attention should be, then we all would be better off. Instead of you putting your attentions where it shouldn't be, leaving where it should be without the attention that's necessary. So people, everything requires attention. I don't know what doesn't. So please prioritize your attentions and help us to have a better world. Help us to have a better space. Help us to have better people. Help us to have better lives because the more you put in, the more you'll get out. Now, I love talking to you guys, but I got to go. So you can listen to me on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Listen Now, Pandora, YouTube, YouTube. I don't know. I went on YouTube the other day 
and I typed in my name and they were trying to direct me somewhere else. My name is Norlinda, N-O-R-L-Y-N-D-A, last name M-U-R-R-Y. I have a channel. They should not be directing you anywhere else but to me because I know don't nobody else has have my name, especially my last name is even spelt different. But you can also email me at sshtmpodcast at gmail.com. I'll be listening and looking for your comments. And I love each and every one of you. I want you to have a great week. And I will too. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.